Hey everyone, this is Mike from the One Stop Co-op Shop, and it's time again for that rewarding and terrifying experience of trying to record and explain a coin game. Today I'm covering the latest entry in the series, Gandhi, the decolonization of British India from 1917 to 1947. And we're gonna do a playthrough here, but probably a partial playthrough because I'm doing the full campaign and that's been taking me uh, three hours or more to play generally, so I'll pretty much stop when I think it's about an hour of video. Maybe after one or two campaigns, we'll see how far we get. I'm gonna explain some quick details on the basics of setup and kind of the overall scope of gameplay, but I'm not gonna teach you all the specifics. Instead, I'm going to explain actions as they are taken in the game, both for me and for the three AI bots. So feel free to use the timestamps to skip to any of those parts or just to jump straight into the playthrough and follow along the best you can. And hey, if you like what you see here on the One Stop Co-op Shop, please subscribe and don't forget the little bell notification thingy to actually know when our videos post. Join all the game conversations on our Slack and or Discord channels. Listen to our podcast on Sundays. And if you want to support us, go to our Patreon for some great perks. For example, I asked our patrons which side I should play here, and they chose by a very narrow vote the Indian National Congress. So I'll be controlling Gandhi and his followers, trying to uh, keep India together and expel the British Raj. So with all that said, let's get to setup. So all the core details of setting up the board and everything come in the rulebook. And again, I'm doing the full scenario, but there's also a shorter one that cuts out an entire campaign. They tell me where to put the forces for the four factions, which spaces start out in the Raj's control, which spaces support the British, and which spaces want to kick them out. All those fun details come from that. So I'm not going to walk through them, it's explained by the book. But a key detail of setup is setting up the event deck. And to explain this quickly, you're going to create a series of piles of 12 random event cards. For the full game, you'll need four of them. For the short game, three. And into each of these piles, you're going to shuffle and place a random campaign card. And the campaign card will be shuffled in with the bottom six cards of each 12 card pile to make sure it doesn't come out too soon. And from the remaining three or four campaign cards, you're going to randomly draw one to determine the starting Viceroy in India. So for me, I'm going to have Lord Mountbatten. And for the non-player Raj, which is when the Raj is controlled by the AI, which it will be here, there is no effect, so he doesn't really do anything. Additionally, when you're playing with one or more non-player factions, and I'm going to have three out of four be non-players, you'll have six cards for each faction. This is new to the coin series. It's something I really like. And these will determine what actions the AI takes in a lot of cases. And you can choose to either have these be separate piles or to shuffle all three or how many of the factions you're going to use together. For this game, I'm going to shuffle them all together, being sure, of course, to take out the faction that I'm controlling. Finally, to finish setup and start the game, I would flip the top event card into the current spot and also flip the top card of the deck so we can always see two. But to start out this longer scenario, as the Congress player, I get to put Gandhi, who is this very big cylinder, uh, one of my activists, and a protest in any space of my choice. And I'll be talking about this more in a second with the basics of play, but there are locations that have two population, this little uh, number two, as opposed to most of the map, which is only one. And I'd like to start Gandhi in one of those bigger population spaces with not too many opponents, which are the uh, red and white cube. So I'm going to go to the Madras Presidency, and sorry for my pronunciation throughout this entire thing, I'm sure I'll get everything wrong, uh, just doing my best here. Alright, and now we are officially ready to play. So again, this how to play section is going to be very brief, just kind of the basics, because you'll see the details as I go through the playthrough. But all coin games are driven by the event cards, and you always have one in the current space, and then one on the top of the deck, so you can see what's coming up. Each card has the four factions at the top, and they go from left to right in terms of the order that they'll have a chance to act on the card. And in a given turn, with a given event card, only two of them will take an action. Each event card will have two possible events that can be triggered by one of those acting factions. And just to note, there are sometimes symbols for the AI, like this means that this is a very important event to the Raj faction, so they're pretty much always going to do it as the AI. When an eligible faction chooses to act, they have a few choices. 
They can do an operation only, which is going to let them do one of their four main actions, like getting more troops on the board or moving around. And when they do that, kind of the smallest thing they can do, they force the second activating faction, if they want to activate, to do only a limited operation, which means an action in a single space on the board. If they instead do an operation plus a special activity, they get one of their three special activities, a powerful additional effect with their action. But that opens up the option for the second faction to do one of the two events on the card. Finally, the first faction can do the event themselves, but then the second faction can do a full operation and special activity, so get a really nice turn. Of course, any faction, when it's their turn, can choose to pass. For the Raj and the Revolutionaries, I'll get to the factions in a moment, they would get resources for that. And for the two non-violent groups, the Muslim League and the Indian National Congress, they get an extra activist from their out-of-play area. And whichever one or two factions acted in a given turn will go to be ineligible for the next card, and only the remaining two or three factions will be able to act on the next event, and anyone who didn't act on the last event comes back to being eligible the next turn. So it's kind of like this back and forth of eligibility and ineligibility. And the game progresses through that, taking turns on event cards until you reach one of these campaign cards. Remember, there are four of them seated in the deck in this scenario. And that's when you'll check to see if any of the factions have won. And you'll also have a bunch of kind of changing things as India kind of calms down for a little bit before another round of turmoil. And a note on solo play, and another reason why this isn't going to be a full playthrough, the solo player has to survive to the end of the entire campaign. Even if your faction would win normally when a campaign card is drawn, if it's not the fourth one, the final one, you have to keep on going and holding on to your power. Now let's take a second to talk through our four forces. The British Raj are the ones in control of most of India. They have the red and the white cubes, and they have their power center in the cities. These uh, big circles here. The revolutionaries, represented by the black color, are using violence to try to expel the Raj by setting up as much unrest and turmoil in the country as they can. Meanwhile, the two non-violent factions, the Green Muslim League and the Orange Congress, are trying to also get rid of the Raj, but through protest instead of violence. But a key difference between them is that while Congress is trying to keep India together, the Muslim League is hoping to establish a separate Muslim state in what would become Pakistan, so they're kind of not always working with the Congress, although they're tacitly allies. And just to explain some of the things you're seeing on the board, so you've got provinces, which are kind of these areas on the board. You've got cities, which I've already mentioned. Some provinces are Muslim provinces. You'll see they're colored green and have sort of a different border. And a key distinction is that some spaces are princely states, like right here, and the other ones are provinces. And the Raj doesn't technically administrate in the princely states. They can just send some of their troops in there to kind of help with unrest, but they can't control them. Whereas the provinces are technically underneath their jurisdiction. They can control fully. Each space can either be controlled by the Raj or uncontrolled. No other factions can technically control a space in this one. And to control a space, they need to have more cubes there, white or red, than all the other factions combined who have active pieces there. So you'll notice that for green, orange, and black, all of them are face down. But when the Muslim League or Indian National Congress activists are protesting, they'll go to their little uh, icon side. And when the guerrillas of the revolutionaries have activated or been discovered by troops, they're both more vulnerable but also help with control because they also have their little icon side. All right, that's enough for now because there's so much to talk about here, but let's just go through the playthrough, see how things go, and I'll talk you through it all. So our first event card is Independence Day Defiantly Declared. And the Raj has the first chance to act, and again, they have this little rifle icon. That means that they want to do the event. Normally, the AI prefers to do an operation with special activity, except when you see a symbol like that. And the Raj will always do the unshaded box, whereas the others will generally do the shaded box, unless indicated otherwise. So let's see what this says. An empty gesture in up to two spaces. Remove one protest or one unrest marker. Then, in each selected space, may pay two resources to shift one level towards active support. And a big thing for this version of coin, which I haven't seen before, is that for both the Raj and the revolutionaries who have resources, uh, the Congress and Muslim League do not, they don't actually keep track of it. You just roll to see how much they can do. So here the Raj won't pay anything. They just get to shift toward support, which is what the Raj wants. Uh, both the Muslim League and Congress want uh, opposition, but they want support of the people and their rule. So they're going to pick two spaces to take away protest or unrest. That's not great for me right off the bat. 
And then they're going to go towards support. Also bad for me because my whole victory condition is based on opposition. So something else besides the AI cards that's new to this version of coin, you've got these little priority charts for each faction, and they show you what they want to most do. So left to right is priority. They care most about shifting support, which they're about to do with this card. And you look for the spots that have dots. So they're looking for a two population space. Remember, spaces can be one or two population with no protest, with unrest, and then uh, all of these become like new tiebreakers. Uh, if those are even, then with most opposition, then neutral to them. And then uh, a Muslim state, we don't have any of those yet. So this is going to help us pick two, but I'll kind of save you the trouble of that and just show you the end result. So the first space they're definitely going to pick is East Bengal, because one of those tiebreakers was having unrest, and this is the only one on the board. Unrest tokens is something the revolutionary faction puts down through attacks and the unrest action, and it's one of their main victory point goals, and it also stops the Raj from kind of changing the support or opposition in space. So because the Independence Day declaration didn't do anything, the revolutionaries are going to lose an unrest, which is going to cost them two victory points. I'll keep track of that with the tracks around the board, but I won't show that to you until it's important. And bad for me, they're also going to switch East Bengal one level towards support. You have five levels you can be at. You can be at complete opposition, passive opposition, one level up is no token, which is neutral, and then you can go to passive support and active support. So this just makes East Bengal neutral. And my victory goal is to have 21 or more population opposing the British. And that gets doubled if it's active opposition. So I get two points from East Bengal being passively opposed and four points from it being actively opposed. But now with that action, I'm down to only two opposition on the entire board. Now, luckily for me, for some reason, the AI doesn't want to go to a space with protests, so they're not going to take away Gandhi's protest here. Instead, they're going to look for one of these neutral two spaces, West Bengal, Punjab, United Providences, or kind of barely down here where you can't see Bombay Presidency. And whenever you have a bunch of options, you're just going to roll for it. So we'll go one, two, uh, three, four, five, re-roll a six. So here it's going to be West Bengal, so they really uh, messed up with this uh, Muslim section of the map over here. There's no unrest or protest to put down, but they do gain one level of passive support, and that's their victory condition. They want to control as much of the map as possible and also have support in high population areas, so that's going to bump them a little closer to victory. So they did an event, which is going to leave me free to do an operation and special activity, which is great for me. And note that when the AI does an event, we never need to bring the deck into things. We only use this if they're going to do an operation. But we have a tough choice here. We can either do the operation and special activity, or we can let one of the other two factions get that and pass, which would then make us first next round, and we could do this quit India movement event that's coming up. So it says in each of two spaces, roll a die. If the result is less than or equal to the number of friendly pieces, remove adversaries. Well, actually, never mind. We're not going to do this because we barely have anybody on the board. So we're not going to get those rolls. Not worth our time. So we'll just do an operation and special activity, show you what kind of actions we can take, and that'll finish up this card because two factions will have acted with it. You've got a nice set of tables for each faction that goes over their four operations and their three special activities. For the Congress, to briefly summarize them, Rally lets me get more of my guys on the board. I have five people in available forces, activists I can bring out, the rest are out of play, and Rally also gets some of your out of play guys into the game. Demonstrate lets you move your activists and then put protest markers on where they're going. Protest allows me to eventually change spaces to oppose the British Raj and build my victory points. Civil disobedience is a more consistent way of putting down protests. And then non-cooperation, like I mentioned, in spaces with protests lets you make those spaces more opposed. For my special operations, negotiate can get Gandhi out of jail because pieces can be arrested or can take away a Muslim state, which is one of the main things the Muslim League is looking for. It's kind of like them taking control of the space, like the Raj takes control and it gives them a ton of victory points. Satyagraha is how I move Gandhi. I can also get rid of unrest if the revolutionaries have built up a lot of that and are close to winning. And then finally, Persuade is probably my most consistently useful one. It helps me expose gorillas so that the uh, Raj can take them out, or take away other activists, or uh, even soldiers, convince them not to oppose us, to just kind of remove some of my enemies from the board. Now, a key concept in this coin game that I didn't mention yet is restraint and unity and protests. So restraint controls the Raj. When they're controlled by a player, it indicates how many resources each of their actions will take. Uh, for the AI, it instead becomes a die roll that'll potentially make them stop taking actions. Unity represents how well the Muslim and Hindu protesters are getting along with each other. It has a major effect on how much the Muslim League can do. 
If both of them go down to one, the entire country is in crisis, which allows the Raj to bring in a ton of extra forces. So we kind of want to keep them above that. And a key thing is to put down protests, which again, my faction needs to win. The only ones that are available are the ones that are to the right of or above the current restraint. So if I don't get the Raj to kind of let loose and do some terrible things to the population, I can't put as many protests as I would like. So it, currently, there's only a single protest available. And by the way, restraint also controls a ton of my actions. Generally speaking, when I do an operation, I can do things in as many provinces or cities or what have you equal to restraint. Plus, I can do things where Gandhi is or protest tokens is. It depends on the operation. But generally speaking, I can do things in four spaces currently. So I've got one protest available to me now, and I'd love to get it in a two-population province. Again, those are kind of the linchpins of winning the game. And ideally, I don't want it in a green province like Punjab, because that'll also help the Muslim League faction win. So I think what I'll do is a demonstration. I can pick up to four locations and move my orange protesters one space adjacent to get to those places. And if the space they move into does not have Raj control, I can put a protest there, which is how, again, my guys get activated. So I think I'll move this one guy from Delhi, which is not worth that much, into United Provinces, which has no control. And I'll put the second available protest there. That's all we can protest right now. I think I'll also move my one activist into West Bengal, try to get them into more important spaces. My activist in the Punjab can stay there because I do want to stay equal to Muslim forces or even exceed them. Otherwise, they can do tricky things like put down Muslim states. And finally, down here, I think for a third move, I'll move my one activist out of Bombay into Bombay presidency. And then for my special activity, I'll do persuade. In two spaces with Congress pieces, I can either flip a gorilla to their activated side or for any active piece, which could be a protester or a gorilla. I can remove them to their available space. So I'm gonna flip the gorilla in Gandhi space so they can't do anything like spread unrest there. And up here in Punjab, I'll remove one of the white Sepoy soldiers. These are Indian kind of conscripted soldiers who can move a lot more freely, but are not generally as useful as the red British troops that can be brought in. So the Quit India Movement becomes the new active card and we have the Simon Commission report published up next. Oh, this is terrible. I'm at the back of this one, which means I'm probably gonna get skipped for an entire turn. And since the Raj and Congress activated, we now have just the Muslim League and the Revolutionaries ready to go. And since neither of them show this as a must-have event, the Revolutionaries are just going to take an operation with special activity like I just did. Now here's where these little AI cards come in. I go through them, just putting them to the back until I come to the first Revolutionary card. And it'll have some if-then statements. If the statement is false, I'll draw another card, or if I get this result, I'll flip it. So let's see, any gorillas in two population spaces with no unrest? Well sure, there's uh, two right there and more elsewhere. So we keep going. Are there underground gorillas? That means not flipped in two or more two population spaces with new unrest. And yeah, you can't see them all, but there's three more up in the north. So the gorillas are going to do the unrest action, which places unrest, which again is how they win the game. Now for this action, they need to have an underground gorilla they can flip. So I have protected Madras presidency from unrest happening here. But there are up to four other spaces currently they could do this action in. So this is where this little thing up here comes. It says in this case, max R, which stands for restraint, which is currently at four. Normally the revolutionaries would have to spend resources equal to the current restraint, which is at four for each unrest action they do. So to kind of model that, after you complete each one in a space, you roll the die, and in this case, if I roll restraint or less, a one, two, three, or four, they stop. They've theoretically run out of money. But if I roll a five or six, it'll pretend that they have enough money, they'll get to place a second unrest, then they'll roll again, and so on and so on. And at this point, all four of these are contenders equally, so let's roll one, two, three, four. Uh, and we'll re-roll a five or a six, come on. Really? Okay, there we go. So, United Provinces. So we put an unrest here, which is going to get the revolutionaries two victory points. And it also leans nations toward neutrality, which kind of hurts all of their opponents. So here the Raj is going to lose their passive support, and they'll lose two victory points from that. And this revolutionary does have to become active and potentially in more danger from being attacked by the Raj because of that. And now we're going to roll. Did the revolutionaries run out of money? No, they did not. They're going for it again. And let's see, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. That'll be Bombay Presidency. So you're gonna put unrest here and take away the passive support there. I don't mind them taking away the passive support, but I don't want them to win. And let's see again. Okay, now they stop after two unrest. 
And another key thing about unrest is at the end of it, you lower restraint by one, which gets us closer to crisis, makes them be able to do unrest for cheaper in the future, opens up protests for both the Muslim League and the Congress I'm controlling, and also makes all of the Raj's actions cheaper. So tons of stuff from this operation. Oh, no, no. They're going to now select a special activity, and their first preference is to assassinate an adversary in an unrest space. Guess who that's going to be. Yeah, don't even have to roll for it, unfortunately. The only active piece in one of those spaces is my activist here. So they go back to available. And worse upon worse, anytime they take out with assassination one of the non-violent pieces, unity goes down. So that was a rough turn for India. All right, the Muslim League is the only one left who can activate. And when they're given the choice of an event or a limited operation, they'll actually usually pass if they're uh, first on the next card, but they aren't here. So they're just going to do the event. And they're always going to do the shaded event unless they have like kind of a white box around them, which they don't here. So it's the same one we didn't want to do. In each of two spaces, roll a die. If the result is less than or equal to the number of friendly pieces there, they don't have more than one guy anywhere, they remove adversaries equal to the roll. And let's see, they prefer to remove people where they have a base, they don't have any in a Muslim space, they do have that, which is a protest, none of those, with Raj control and two pop if possible. So in this case, that's going to be East Bengal and Calcutta. But they need to roll a 1 to make anything happen, so let's see, East Bengal... Oh my gosh! Now they prefer to remove bases first, but bases are protected by other units there, so they can't do that. But troops are definitely preferred over Sepoy soldiers, so they're gonna get rid of this guy. And then in Calcutta, let's see if they can do it again... No, not this time. Alright, so the Raj and I are active this next round. And it's a Simon Commission report published. If it was a primary event for me, the Raj, instead of taking an operation and a special activity, would just do the operation to remove the event choice for me, but they're not going to do that because they're not too worried about it. And let's see what they're going to do. Is a die roll less than or equal to the number of available troops? With the one just sent packing by the Muslim League, there are five troops available, so yes. And then do cubes exceed all active non-base adversaries in any spaces? But this time the answer is no. Pretty much all of the active pieces are down here in the south, and the cubes are in the cities, not there yet. So the no means we keep this card but flip it, and they're going to deploy and try to get more units out on the board, which is not good for us. And how deploy works is they can put up to six people in each city, although again they got to roll for restraint after each one. They can always do things with troops with just red cubes for free, but they have to stop doing things with white cubes if they uh, make a bad roll. They'll also get to add two more cubes from out of play to being available, so their army will get bigger and bigger. Then we'll get to their special activity. And the only thing that matters for them deploying here is how adjacent they are to adversaries. So how many people from the other factions are next to the city they're going to deploy in. So the winner by a landslide for first deployment is over here in Bengal. They deploy first to try to get troops to three, so they needed to add two. And they can add up to six cubes total, so for the other four available, they're going to add a ton of the white cube sepoys. Then they're going to roll and see if they go equal to or under restraint, and they don't, so they'll get to do the white cubes in another city. And this time it'll be Delhi, so again, two soldiers to get it to three. And four more white cubes. Roll to C. And nope, they're still going. And next will be Madras, where I didn't want them to go, and there are only six cubes left, so we don't have to roll any more because they would be done deploying anyway. They get to add two from the out-of-place section to available. They always want troops first. And now they're going to do the special activity. Their favorite one is usually govern. That's where they get to do imperialism, which is how they shift spaces from opposition or neutrality to support. And if they can't do that, they can also remove people kind of like I did with my special activity. Now for them to buy support, they need to have cubes in the space and there can't be any active adversaries, including bases there. And they can only shift a given space up to two levels, but you roll, and that's how many shifts they can do total. So here they can do four, which is probably the most they would do anyway. All right, the first clear winner for this governance is the Punjab. They've got active support there now, two of their four levels, and that's going to give them four more victory points. That's just because they have a cube there and nobody's active. And next they're going to pick a place that is neutral. All the cities support them, so it's going to be one of these princely states they have uh, white cubes in. There's four of them. So one, two, three, four. It'll be this one. And they'll shift at the other two levels they have remaining, which will get them two more victory points. Now I'm way back in order on the next card, so I guess I'm probably just going to do an event for this. Let's see, I can add up to four activists and up to two unrest markers to any spaces. And ooh, this is good, because I don't really like unrest. That helps the revolutionaries. But I can also add strikes on railways. I haven't talked about it yet, but you'll see with some of the Raj actions, they can use these little railway spaces to move more quickly from the cities. And they also have these numbers, which is how many resources they give the Raj at the end of every campaign. Not going to matter at all for the AI, because they don't track resources. 
But still, putting a strike on one of these won't help the revolutionaries to win, but will stop the Raj from using it to get to dangerous spots they want to be in. But first we get to uh, do four activists. Let's get some in the United Provinces, because otherwise that protest might just die immediately. We get one in Bihar, because it's uh, too poppin', I don't have anybody there. And one in East Bengal, just to balance out the Muslim League there. Now for my two strikes, I'm going to take out this railroad and this one, because that means these cubes can only go adjacent and can't even get over here in case I put a protest there. I'll have kind of free reign. Muslim League is first. Britain maintains the salt tax, but they don't care because it's not a primary event for them, so they're just going to do a special activity and operation. Let's see what the cards say. Are there six or more activists in India anywhere? And interestingly enough, there are exactly five. So yeah, they're going to tell me to draw the next card, because I guess they uh, don't think they're enough to do things effectively. Are any Muslim spaces eligible for non-cooperation? Non-cooperation is the same as my action. That's where on a protest space you can take away support or add opposition. They don't have any protest spaces yet, so we're going again. Do nonviolent activists equal or exceed cubes in any spaces without protest? Well, yes, absolutely. There's no cubes in West Bengal, and they definitely equal them in the Punjab. So first they're going to try to negotiate to place a Muslim state, which is so huge for them. It gets them so many victory points. It's like a four if they get a two population space. But haha, I knew this might be coming. They not only have to be in a spot with no Raj control, like West Bengal, they also have to exceed the number of my pieces there. So my one activist is keeping them from declaring this a Muslim state. They can also negotiate to remove unrest, but they're not in any of those spaces. So moving on, they're going to replace an adversary with one of their activists. This lets them, not during a crisis, replace a Sepoy White Cube, Gorilla, or Protest Marker with one of their activists. And they're going to prefer East Bengal still because of the two population and the uh, Raj control. And generally speaking, the AI will try to destroy your people whenever possible, but they can't here. It wasn't an option. So then they'll usually pick the one that has more. So they're going to get rid of the White Cube and turn it into one of their activists. And that's more important than it might seem, because remember the base always counts as active, so right now the number of cubes is equal to the active pieces, so the British have lost control of East Bengal. Which means if the Muslim League gets to go again, they could negotiate and form a state here. Right now they exceed me, I'd have to get another person there to stop them from doing that. Now for their actual operation, it says, are there any available protest markers? There are, there are two, because restraint went down from the unrest. So they're going to do civil disobedience and place some protests. And they're generally going to pick green two population spaces with the fewest cubes possible. And they can only do a number of spaces up to unity, which is two, but currently there are only uh, two protest markers. So they're going to do a protest here where there are no cubes. And they're going to randomly decide between Punjab and East Bengal because both only have one cube. So one, two, three, four, five, six. That will be over here. And remember, everyone becomes active when there's a protest. So now the Raj will need to bring in a bunch of troops to uh, put that down. And the revolutionaries are up next, and they're not first on the next card, so they're going to do the event. Or they would, but you always have to look if an event is what's called effective. And here you'll see the event puts activists or guerrillas on railways. And they clarify in the rules that no non-player will ever put somebody on the railways when the Raj is a non-player, because they don't really matter that much. So instead, they're going to take a limited operation. We're going to see what they would do. They don't get a special action, and they'll only do this in one space. So let's see, any gorillas in two pop spaces with no unrest? Yes, because they didn't get to all of them last time. And are they in two plus? Yes, they are. So they're going to do unrest again, but only in a single spot. And only Punjab and East Bengal are possible here. It's going to be a roll off. And so we'll go with Punjab. So it'll be an unrest, bring support down one. But the gorilla becomes active there. And actually, I just realized I had the Punjab marked as not controlled by the Raj, but it was until right now, which might have changed up some of the uh, Muslim League actions, but too late. And that's it for the revolutionaries, because again, it was a limited operation. Only one space could be affected. And once again, sadly for me, the Raj and I are available to act, but they're before us. And look, this is a key event for us. We would have loved this one, which means they're going to do just an operation, no special activity, to deny us the chance to do the event. And let's see, I don't think this card will happen. Is a die roll less than or equal to the available troops? There's only two. Oh, <laughs> okay, never mind. And do cubes exceed all active non-base adversaries in any spaces? And let's see, this time we actually have some. Uh, they do not hear, and they do not hear. So here you go. Sometimes the die rolls go weird, and the AI does something stupid. They're going to deploy again, even though they only have three cubes to put out. And they still prefer the place adjacent to the most enemy pieces. Let's see, uh, three, six there. Yes, they're still here. 
Now they're not going to put two troops there because they already got three there. So they're just going to add the one white cube they have. And no, they don't because uh, restraint is three currently. Or actually, wait, you know, it's two because I forgot the revolutionaries did unrest again. So all we have left to place are two troop cubes. And since they want to get three to a city, uh, they're going to go down next to Madras Presidency in Madras. And there we go. They're done. They'll move two more troops to available, and they're going to try to govern and boost their support again. For a maximum of uh, four shifts again. They cannot do the Punjab again because there is an active adversary there. So they're once again looking at the princely states. They're going to do two out of these three, so I'll just roll for which one they don't do. So they won't do Orisa. They'll do uh, those two. Both all the way to active support. Good for them. Oh, wait, wait, I forgot. They want to deny me my events. They didn't actually do a special activity, so let's get rid of that support. And because of that, I can't do this. Set three states of passive opposition. Oh, that would have been great. Nope, my only choice is a limited operation in a single space or to pass. And again, passing would get me one activist from the out of play box. But you know what? That's fine with me. I'll just do my one action, make it civil disobedience, and grab one of the two protests that are now available because of the unrest and get this province that I've locked down with the strikes on the railroads to be in a good spot. Oh wait, I didn't lock it down. They can just come from Delhi down this railroad. Well, hopefully they'll be more interested in the United Provinces and leave me alone. So whenever my turn comes around and I get the chance, I can do a ton of civil disobedience and really change some uh, opposition in our favor. Hey, looking at the new card, the Muslim League and Revolutionaries are the first two on here, and they're the ones who are active anyway, but neither of them wants to do the event first. And this card is again asking, do they have six or more activists? And they do now because of the uh, infiltration where they converted that uh, soldier into one of them. So first, if there was a crisis, they try to place a Muslim state, but instead they're going to try to remove uh, some gorillas. I like that. So the only spot they can remove a gorilla is over here, but that means the unrest is in jeopardy and could go away automatically at the end of the campaign, which is nice for us. So unfortunately, that means they're going to remove one of my activists in either of these spaces. Looks like it'll be over here. And let me tell you, that is pretty terrible because whenever uh, I remove their pieces or they remove mine, unity goes down one. Which means if I do non-cooperation to get closer to winning, I'm going to put the country in crisis. Or it'll also happen if they do non-cooperation or if the revolutionaries do another unrest action. Next, they're going to see if they want to rally to place more activists or not. They're going to roll and see if it's less than the number of available activists plus the ones in jail. Nobody's in jail right now, but they uh, have four available. Oh, wow. So no, they're not. Oh no, well, <laughs> speaking of crisis, here we go, because they are non-cooperating before I even get the chance. So they're going to select any Muslim spaces with protest to shift toward opposition. So these are the only two. They're each going to shift one level. So East Bengal will have no support now, and West will have one opposition. And that means we immediately dip down into crisis. The moment that happens, we pause, we roll a d6, and the Raj gets to place that many units from out of play anywhere they want on the board for free. Oh, of course it's five. And they'll take troops first, so they have all of those uh, from out of play. And they're basically going to try to come in and reestablish order in all these places they've lost control in. Although, interestingly, they prefer places with no protest, uh, but with unrest and with the fewest active adversaries. Oh, darn it, I missed it again. Because the revolutionary went away, uh, they regained control there. So first spot they're going to go to to avoid all the protests is Bombay Presidency. And they place their troops first, so uh, there we go. They need two to outnumber the revolutionary there. And they've still got three more to place. And they want to go to the two population places with the fewest active adversaries, so they're going to go ahead and put two to take uh, control of West Bengal. And they'll put the last one in Madras Presidency. Not enough to take control, but it's a start for them. Okay, and the revolutionaries are going to do the event. And note that here they've got the white box, so they don't want to do this one, which adds activists. They're going to do up here, the future leader of Pakistan. So they're going to add one base, one of their own, which, remember, is a victory point condition for them, to any space with room, and then shift that space in an adjacent space, each one level towards active support. And all they care about is uh, the most gorillas to protect the base and the fewest cubes to attack it there. Besides that, it'll be random. So the only space with a gorilla and no cubes is United Provinces. And they have to shift that space to active support, which usually they don't want to do. And then one more adjacent one, and they want to give as little support as possible. So let's see if they can do Delhi or Central India Agency. We'll roll one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so Central India will also go to passive support. And it's me and the Raj again, and hey, I finally have an event that they say is good for me. Let's see. Add one unrest marker to a space with cubes. I don't love that. Then remove up to four pieces there to available, and then shift the space two levels towards active opposition. Wow, that is really good. 
Well, let's see, I think Bombay Presidency is my best choice here. I'm definitely going to do this. Let's get rid of both the troops to available and the gorilla. And it's at up to four, so we can leave me. That takes away the control, by the way. And this is tricky because I'm adding another unrest here, which does not give the revolutionaries extra victory points. And I'm sending it to active opposition. So that was great for me. But it does leave the Raj free to do an operation and special activity, which I have to imagine will be to come in and crush us. Now let's see, are there six plus cubes total in protest spaces? Absolutely not. They have barely moved into them. So new card. Are there any two pop provinces with no Raj control? Yeah, there's like 8,000. And is a die roll less than available troops? Are they going to deploy again? Because <laughs> remember, there's four troops now. So yes, they are. They do have an action called Rally that would just slam all of these guys into every space and like take over all of India. I love that they're not doing it. So remember, they want to get three troops to every city. There are already uh, troops in most of them, so they'll just do... Well, I guess we have to roll, because they might go to Karachi first. Oh, no, they won't. There's nobody next to it. Let's see, they'll do uh, three in Bombay, and the last two in Karachi. Yay! They already have all their troops in play, so they'll get uh, two white cubes from out of play. They'll want to use martial law to add unrest and remove protesters, but uh, there aren't any spaces like that with cubes in them. So instead, they'll just govern again for a total of uh, six moves. Although, again, they can usually only do four. Let's see. Uh, no active adversaries is the Punjab, so they're definitely going to do uh, up to six there. It's uh, one to get rid of each unrest, and then they can still do two more. So they'll just get this to active support. That's two of their six. And for the other one, we're back to the neutral state shuffle. Do one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so Orissa's going to full support. And I don't know if I already said this, but that's because Govern is limited to two spaces. So they can't just like spread it everywhere. All right, nobody's passed yet, so we keep on having the same pairings, Revolutionaries and then Muslim League. Revolutionaries will do an operation with special activity. In this case, they're really still trying to do unrest. Well, they do have one unrevealed guy in East Bengal, so I guess they'll do it there. But man, they're running out of people. Well, actually, they might not. Are there underground guerrillas in two or more spaces? No, that's the only one left. So it's going to flip. I imagine they'll rally. No, they're still going to try to do unrest, but first they're going to aid to go... Oh, that's smart. So the aid action gets them resources, but clearly they don't care about that here. So instead they're just going to go underground in two spaces, which means they can uh, turn their uh, gorillas back down. They've only got two gorillas left. So one, and all the way down here, two. And then they'll clearly start placing unrest until they roll a three or less. Yeah, it's going to be random first for the ones that don't have any unrest yet. So one, two, three, and four, five, six up in East Bengal. So they're doing the Madras presidency. They'll get an unrest there, but they can't uh, bring it away from neutral. And then if they roll a one, two, or three, they will stop. That's it. They never get to the other one. All right, the Muslim League is going to look at the event because they're not first on the next card. Hunger Strike draws unwanted attention. Uh, Raj resources for every activist in jail, then shift restraint minus two. Restraint's already at one, and they don't care about resources. So that's not effective. They're going to do a limited operation. Oh, and interesting. It looks like it's going to be a lot like mine. Are there any available protest markers? There's only one. So they're going to do civil disobedience in that one space and then be done. And yeah, I don't even have to check. It's pretty obvious. There's only one two-population space not protesting yet for Muslims. It's going to activate both of us and take away control there because we are now equal to or outnumbering the one troop. All right, it's right back to us. And once again, the Raj is first and we're not good on the next card. So we're probably just going to get an event. Let's see if the Raj's run of stupidity can continue. I kind of expect not. Die roll equal to or less than available troops, considering there are zero. No, they're not going to deploy. Are there underground guerrillas in places that support the Raj? Actually, yeah, there are. Do troops in cities exceed troops in provinces? Oh my gosh, yes. Okay, they're finally going to sweep. Unfortunately, this is the action that takes the longest, because you got to move everybody out. But uh, I'll try to do a kind of streamline, and you'll see the end results. But first, they are going to govern, trying to remove protests where there's no activists. That doesn't apply. Then they'll do their shifts of support, I guess, in those neutral spaces for up to five, more than they need. First, they'll do it down here, the only princely state that was still at neutral. And then they'll just randomly do one of these places at passive support that they have cubes in, I guess, probably one of the cities. And for this, we're going to do a random space. How it works is we roll, we see a one and a two. We look on the map and we basically count up until we reach a spot that applies. In this case, we finally land on Delhi, which will go to full support. And now the jerks are going to sweep. So how sweeping works is they can take troops and move them into either adjacent spaces, or they can move into a railway and then move somewhere adjacent to the railway, which is anywhere adjacent to the line itself, up to this circle, and even adjacent to the circle, which is a town. So for example, the troops in Delhi could go to Punjab, Rajpuna, United Provinces, Central India Agency. Although actually, uh, red cubes cannot go into princely states. I've never said that because it's never come up. 
So like I said, this will take a while. Let me just go through it. Basically how it works is I find their first destination. So let's show you one for an example. So you want a space with no rouse control, two population, currently under protest with the fewest active adversaries and hey, unrest maybe and no troops. So the first one is actually pretty easy. It's going to be Bihar right there because it has only one person. It has a protest and having fewer pieces is more important to them than having no unrest. And they do have these pawns to kind of keep track of where you've gone. Definitely useful. I'm going to go ahead and put one there. And the origin space, because you can use multiple origins, uh, will be the place with the most cubes. Which in this case, because Calcutta can't reach it, will be Delhi. First, they try to get a soldier there and one Sepoy. And they will not move out of a place that would lose them control. So like if I had a bunch of people in here, they wouldn't move that many. And that's already enough for them to take control for my one guy. So they are done. They're not going to move anybody else in there. But they are going to roll to see if they can still move the white cubes. Remember, they can keep on moving the red cubes as much as they want. But if they get a 1 here equal to Restraint, they will stop. No such luck. All right, next fewest active pieces with a protest is Punjab. They've already got a soldier there, so they're going to get 1. And they'll just keep on sending white cubes. They prefer not to use their reds right away until they exceed us, which they now do. Once again, we see if they stop using... Oh, they do! Lucky for us. So now they're just going to look for places their uh, troops can go. And at this point, it becomes pretty easy. They're just going to send as many as they can to the places that are adjacent with two populations. So they're going to go in there. And let's see here. Uh, is this going to be enough to control? No, with the base, we will still uh, take control from them there. They do prefer protest before non-protest. So they're going to send a bunch of people here. So they'll send three, which is enough to take control. And finally, Bombay Presidency. They only need a single one. So they'll stop with that. See, I knew the hammer was going to fall eventually. Now, they can't go into princely state, so one cube will go there, and one cube will go there, and yikes, I think the Raj might be eligible to win, so if we get the campaign card soon, that'll be it. Let's see what the event I can activate is, if it'll stop them at all. Add an unrest marker to one space with both activists and troops, and then remove two cubes there and set the space to neutral. Oh, yes, indeed, that's exactly what I needed to uh, take away their support. It kind of makes sense thematically. They just sent out a ton of troops, and then a massacre happened, unfortunately. I can remove two cubes. Usually it would say troops have to be last, but here I can pick. That'll take away their control, and their support is gone, so that's minus six victory points in one shot. And look, our friends the Revolutionaries have an event they want to do. Great Calcutta Killings. Oh my gosh, this uh, just really seems to be kind of on the nose with what's happening on the board. In up to four spaces with underground gorillas, add one gorilla, or if no Raj control, one unrest marker. Well, they're really happy about that. They don't have an underground gorilla in the south, so they're going to get a free one there, a free one there. And since there's no Raj control, they're going to get an arrest there for victory points and a second one to kind of bunker down here. That means the Muslim League will get an operation and special activity. Let's hope they can get rid of some of the support for the Raj. Are there Muslim League activists in India? Yes. Uh-oh, there is a crisis, so they're probably going to get a Muslim state. Oh, I got lucky here. They needed to have a base in the spot. Now, what's funny is they could put a Muslim state here, but the card doesn't say it, so shh, we won't tell them. So instead, they're going to persuade to activate guerrillas and then remove adversaries. All right, first, they're going to do it in a protest space, so they'll get rid of this cube and take away control. Hooray! Now, there's a protest in East Bengal and Punjab, so they'll do it randomly. And sadly, they do prefer to get rid of me, so bye-bye to my guy. That would lower unity by one, but it's already uh, in the tank. And whoops, there we go. Just as I was about to be first on a card, this will be the first card of the next campaign, but this other card immediately takes precedence, and we're going to do a campaign round. Let's see how that works out. So first we're going to check for victory. Did anybody win? So the Muslim League is doing terribly at this point. They haven't put any Muslim states on the board, and they only have one place of passive opposition. I'm doing a bit better with that one province in full opposition. But by far the closest to winning, only five points away, are the Revolutionaries. They have a lot of unrest on the board. The Raj, meanwhile, you can't see, but they're at 33. They need 39 to win. So they were pretty close. Not as close as the Revolutionaries, but man, they were going to win a couple of cards ago. We just knocked them back quite a bit. Next, we add resources, but happily, we don't have to worry about that because neither of the factions in the game use resources. Next, the Raj gets to do Imperialism in up to four places where they have control and red cubes and white cubes. And they can do it in spots up to double a die roll. Oh, it's so only four. That's really bad for them. Now, their first preference would have been here, which would have crushed my uh, good opposition. But lucky me, they never got a white cube in there because of that bad rally roll, so they can't do it. So the next preference is down here, Gandhi space, where I never got to do much this time. I remember they rolled four shifts, so they're going to use the first one to get rid of unrest and then the next two to get it all the way up to active support. 
Remember, we already checked for victory, so even if this stuff pushed them into winning, it wouldn't matter right now. And the only other two population space they control and have both types of cubes in is right here, so that's going to go to active support. And that'll be their last point of the four. Next will be constructive program. First, I get to pick spaces, and then if there's any left, the Muslim League does. And the total of spaces we shift is equal to unity, which is one. So we're just going to pick one spot. I won't give the uh, Muslim League a chance. It has to be a place where I have pieces and there's no Raj control, and I shift it two levels towards opposition. And that's easy. I'll do the only one that's non-Muslim that I can do. I'll make United Provinces go right to passive opposition. And again, it doesn't say that I and the Muslim League get to change provinces. It's a total equal to unity, and I get them first. So I already used the one. They don't get to do anything. But they do get a free base in any spot with no Raj control, and then so do the revolutionaries. And they want a spot with not too many cubes, so it's going to be uh, West Bengal or Punjab. We'll go with Punjab. And their bases don't help them with victory like the revolutionaries, but they give them more flexibility to place Muslim states, uh, recruit people faster, take more actions. Now, whereas the Muslim League likes to spread out their bases, revolutionaries like to put them together, so they're going to take the second spot in the United Provinces and really uh, double down on controlling that spot. Then finally, the part that takes some time again, it's always moving units that's uh, tough in this one. We're going to get a new Viceroy, which is the campaign card that came up, and it lets them do uh, martial law more easily. And then the Raj is basically going to have to run away from any provinces it doesn't control. And it's also going to have to send its troops back to the cities, and it can only keep one troop on each city. Uh, they could keep people in the provinces for resources, but they generally won't do that when it's the AI. And then I'll get to move my activists. Muslim League will move their activists. Revolutionaries will move around. And then we kind of reset things like unity and restraint go back up. We get rid of protests, all that kind of stuff as Indian kind of calms down. So what I do to make things easy for the Raj forces, because they're the toughest, is I take all the cubes from places where they don't have control. And I just kick them off and I use them to kind of fill in everything else. Now the white cubes can stay on the princely states. I won't pull them off yet. Now the next thing I do is I take the white cubes I have available and I'll pull them from places where I have a bunch if I need to. And I put them where there are troops in provinces because those troops are going to pull away in a second. And then once I've done that, I can pull all the troops away. And that just basically means that uh, they will maintain control with white cubes instead of red. Then they can only keep one cube on each city, so I'm just going to put one on each and all the rest will go to available. So they really lose a ton of forces in terms of the British troops. Okay, then they want to have exactly three Sepoys in random princely states. I've already got that, so I don't have to move anybody around. And then if I had any cubes left from provinces with no control, I would kind of distribute them among the provinces, but I don't. Although, you know, I might have done that a little bit out of order, so I bet some of the cubes that are in the cities would be somewhere else, but I uh, messed up, so it's okay. And now I can move my pieces to spots without Raj control. I can leave them there, though, if I want to. So I think I'll, like, leave the guy in the Bombay presidency, but I think I will move the people away from the Madras presidency because there's so many cubes there. Yeah, I think I'll actually try to equal out the uh, green pieces, although they can, of course, redistribute and uh, stop me from doing that. And, of course, that's exactly what they'll do with their two random guys. They're going to outnumber me there. They already outnumber me over there with the base. Meanwhile, the gorillas want to leave someone on each space with unrest if they can, or with a base to protect it. Because in spots without gorillas, like Bombay Presidency, the unrest is just going to magically go away. And then they want to try to get groups of three gorillas. They do have uh, three that aren't protecting anything. Uh, to two population spots, the Raj doesn't rule with the most support for the Raj. East Bengal and Punjab are tied for that, so we'll roll it off. And in this case, all three of them are going to go over here. And that's it. We'll finish up this campaign and this playthrough. You shuffle the Arjuna deck, which will randomize which actions will come out next time. You remove all the protests, all the strikes, which does mean that all of the activists will become inactive again. They're not actively protesting. You also flip all the gorillas at their ground if they aren't already. And in spaces without gorillas, one unrest goes away. So actually, they were lucky. Bombay presidency is still uh, somewhat reeling. And finally, you reset restraint and unity both to the number of campaigns left in the game, which in this case is three campaign cards. So there you have it, about one-fourth of a full solo campaign of Gandhi. Like I said, I'm definitely not close to winning, and the Raj is pretty close, but anything could happen in the next sets of rounds. If you'd like to see my review of the game and how it stacks up against the other coin games I've played, click the link that just popped up. Good gaming, everyone, and I'll see you at the next stop.